fails to deliver can represent suppression of stock price, but it also could be an indicator of stock price manipulation. I've started with the fails to deliver chart pulled up on the screen. This is only the recent history for NEO stock. And the yellow line represents the stock price for NEO and where it was trading on a particular day. The white lines represent the number of shares that could not be located. These are called fails to deliver. So for example, on this particular day, I think this was early in March, 2023, there were over 3 million shares that couldn't be located. So maybe they weren't even shares at all. And yet they could have been used to mess with stock price. And look, the stock price was down. And, and in fact, for just a bigger picture overview, for me, it's kind of simple. It looks like there's a pretty obvious correlation, even here in the recent history where the NEO stock price popped up and we had this lower, this almost lapse in the fails to deliver versus where we had fails to deliver, fails to deliver, stock price down, staying down, staying down. And then a big spike here, fails to deliver with the stock price coming down. Look, these are not even reported real time. This is at least 14 day delayed data. So we can never get access to this real time. That in and of itself is a problem. And one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of trading, but how about this? In the past, we've seen NEO stock run. We've seen probably what was a short squeeze. And if you look back in the history of the fails to deliver with that, you'll see big spikes of the white lines leading up to the point where, and I'm going to give you a couple of dates, May 1st, 2020, the stock price for NEO was trading $3.18 on that day. And by November 27, 2020, within seven months, in less than seven months, the stock price ran for NEO from $3.18 to $54. And if you look at that window, what you'll see is a big drop off of the fails to deliver while the NEO stock price just kept going up. Now, interestingly enough, and my final note before we move on, is that during that time frame, I remember watching the daily trade volume for NEO. In a lot of days, it seemed like it was trading it with 100 million shares or more. I think that is an indicator and something to keep an eye on moving forward if or when we eventually see another big move made by NEO. And if it will be sustained, I think that trade volume does come into play, at least while shorts are involved. Now, let's talk about this. Shout out to Atta, the odd investor. He's got his own YouTube channel. And this is from a video I did several weeks ago where I did a NEO stock fails to deliver check. And he said in the comment section, fails to deliver is another dirty game shorts play. What else are we missing? So I decided I should offer some of the things that I've dug up. So here we go. My response to Atta, I'll offer some things that can be used either alone or in conjunction with others for illicit, illegal, or manipulative purposes related to the short selling of stocks. Some of these are legal in some global jurisdictions and some do not necessarily denote illegal or Ill, uh, illicit behavior, although they can be used illicitly or illeg illegally. And so again, we're talking about not just the US market, but globally, markets all across the world, China. And in fact, we're gonna talk about China in just a minute, kind of an interesting point or two to be made there. But the US market, Europe, even South Korea is gonna weigh in here. But let's get back to this. So I've linked a few articles below and I will link them again for anyone who wants to check these out. Just go down to the description and check these out and do your own research. Of course, I'm just a researcher. I'm not an attorney. I'm not uh, any kind of a financial advisor. I don't want to be those things. I just like sharing a little of my research. So back to my comment response. Citadel as a market maker and hedge fund is in a unique position and has a pretty shady history. So I pulled some of their articles as part of the links. If you get through it all, you will better understand why I've referenced Citadel as the suspicious short involved in NEO stock. Fails to deliver or FTDs, that's one way. Dark pools, high frequency algorithm trading, spoofing, naked shorting, tokenization. These are all different ways that can be used to do some sort of stock price suppression or manipulation and that sort of thing. Some of them, again, you know, in some markets, some different global areas, some of these things are actually legal. They're allowed. So how interesting if you're, say, a company like Citadel or someone who maybe wants to short a company in a stock. And if you realize you can, let's say, do naked shorting legally, if you just set up a company or an entity in whatever jurisdiction in, let's say, Europe that allows it, well, then you can just do that and now not even run the risk of getting in trouble within the US market or let's say the Chinese market. But here we go. If we go back to 2015, Citadel, a US hedge fund, has their account suspended in China. And this is more than 30, 30 trading accounts, but Citadel was one that 
caught a headline because of what they were doing. And, and you know what? I'm going to move on to this article now because this talks about what Citadel agreed to pay China. And the Chinese regulators basically hit them for $97 million. This is the settlement that they had. This is reported in 2020. And so this is after basically being banned from the Chinese markets for five years. How interesting that the Chinese regulators up here to take this stuff more seriously than the U.S. regulators. More on that in just a second. South Korea also getting into the mix, fining Citadel for stock algorithm trading breaches. Sound familiar? This is back in, this article was from 2023. And again, I'm going to link all these so I won't go in depth into all of them uh, so that you can check them out on your own and, and put in however much or however little time you choose. This is actually from the SEC, the U.S. regulator. SEC charges Citadel Securities for violating order marking requirements of short sale regulations. How much was the fine? Now, remember, the Chinese uh, regulator hit Citadel or rather made them agree to or they chose to agree to, however you want to say it, $97 million and they were banned for five years. This was a $7 million penalty levied by the U.S. regulator. All right. But the U.S. regulators have hit them before. This is back in 2017. Citadel Securities paid $22 million for misleading clients about pricing trades. I mean, it's just, it goes on and on. But here's, this is an ongoing case here. This is pending. I don't think this has been finalized yet. This is a biotech company that says Citadel and other big traders manipulated its stock price. I don't think that it's been uh, finalized, but this is about the market maker spoofing trades. Now, check this out. I've actually highlighted this part because I thought this was really interesting. This scheme can be used. This is from the legal counsel representing the company that's going after Citadel saying that they spoofed and, and basically manipulated and messed with their stock price. This scheme can be used multiple times during a trading day and then repeated throughout a protracted trading period to maximize the speed of their market access and execution of their trading strategies. Spoofers typically utilize algorithmic trading programs through high frequency trading computer systems, which enable thousands of baiting orders to be placed in a matter of seconds and sometimes milliseconds. Folks, I can't compete with that. I'm just a small retail investor. I don't have computers doing my trading and I certainly don't know about baiting orders or how to do this multiple times in a day. But what I do know is there have been a lot of days recently where when I look at the NEO stock price, it sure looks like it's just trading in a pattern, just very patternized, consistent trading in a downward direction. <laughs> Most of the time is what it looks like. And I just, I wonder, this stuff is in my mind when I'm thinking about that. But hang on, let's get down here now to this part. This is this is just so crazy. Uh, defendants, in order to carry out their spoofing scheme, defendants placed tens of millions of baiting orders and executed millions of orders of manipulated prices during the relevant period. And then they want to say that 34% of the trading days during this relevant period, so 34% of the time, they're saying that this was going on where they were messing with stuff. 34, 34%. Imagine that. Imagine you're looking at the history. And this is why the fails to deliver is so fascinating for me because this is only the US market. This is delayed data. But when it comes in, for example, you've got you know things like this where the stock price is obviously it kind of popped up here. And what happened at the same time? The fails to deliver kind of dropped off. But look at all this cumulative fails to deliver stuff going on, all this junk going on here. And then look at when there was a drop off, the stock price was higher. It, I can't, I can't uh, imagine why people could look at this and not think there is at least a correlation between the things. And so with this only being the US market, and then just toss in the fact that even when they apparently are getting caught, companies like Citadel can just settle. And in fact, I think in the one settlement where they paid $7 million, it was for over or about five years worth of breach. Now, again, compare that to when they got in trouble in China. China hit them with a five-year ban where they couldn't even trade over there and almost a $100 million fine. Isn't it interesting that perhaps China is being more protective of its markets than the US. How crazy. But at the same time, you have to, at least I have to keep in mind that a company that wants to mess with a stock in the global markets can not only mess with the stock, I think in some cases I've heard that they will mess with a basket. So maybe they target an entire sector 
um, you know, with maybe the EVs, let's say, or let's say they've chosen select Chinese companies and they're doing the same type of thing. And where in that case, that recent case with the biotech company, you know, they're saying that they and they named a bunch of different defendants. Imagine if some of those companies are actually working together to do things. I mean, let's just let's go full on conspiracy theory, right? Uh, I mean, we've already seen here where China will levy a much bigger fine against these guys than the US. So what else are we missing? That's what I want to know. I don't know, but, and sorry for the rants, drop it in the comments. I wanted to do a follow-up on this. It's just kind of an ongoing thing that I track and keep in mind and in the back of my mind, especially as when I first talked about Citadel as a suspicious short, it was sort of like a, hey, heads up, this is a company I'm going to keep an eye on. And this was back in the fall of 2021 when the NEO stock price was trading above $40. And since then, it's pretty easy to see what's happened if you just look at the stock history. So I don't know, I want to hear from other people, but just kind of sharing this data again, all the links, I'll put them down in the description so you can check things out for yourselves. Have a great day. We'll see y'all again very soon.